Happy Thursday morning. We're going to do a little yoga this morning. Um, just a little energizing flow, nothing fancy. If you need to grab some tools, make sure you have, I have some blocks here if you need some straps, if your hamstrings are tight, make sure you grab your straps. Good morning, everyone. And um, we're going to get going within a minute and we're going to get started in a seated meditation. So good morning, beautiful people. Good to see you all. Um, whenever uh, you're ready, we're going to get situated into our mats and we're going to start a class in about like a minute. So that's a perfect time for you to get settled, to get connected to your breath. So the starting position is going to be a nice seat, Sukhasana, easy seat. Crossing the shin bones right in the middle. So the middle of the left shin bone and the middle of the right shin bone is going to meet. And then your ankle bone is going to come right underneath your knee bones. And you're, you're going to start to flex your feet. That's going to protect your knee joint. Then you're going to start to release the knees down towards the mat. You can place your hands onto your knees, onto your thighs. And start to feel the connection with the sit bones. Feeling the connection with the left sit bone, feeling the connection with the right sit bone. Gently tucking the chin towards the chest, lengthening through the back of the spine, rolling the shoulders away from the ears, guiding the shoulder blades together onto your back. Just focus onto your breath. Take a couple conscious breaths here in and out through the nose. And as you focus it on your breath, Scan through the whole body. Start to feel the connection with the entire body, from the toes all the way to the crown of the head. We've been noticing some things in the body. We tend to shift to the right side or to the left side. Can you find center? We tend to tense around the hip joint. Can you release the muscles around the hip bones? And you release the knees down towards the mat, and yet you are flexing your feet. You're keeping the energy in the feet, but can you keep the feet light in the same time? You then focus on the breath as it travels down all the way to the bottom of the lungs. Feel your lungs as they expand. And feel your shoulders melting away from the ears every time when you exhale. Softening the muscles around the face, softening your jaw, your eyelids. Start to feel the connection with yourself. Start to create that focus onto your mat. Deep inhaling through the nose. This time open your mouth and create a nice audible exhale, sayad, exhale, let it out. AJA, let it go. One more time, deep, which inhale, breath in through the nose. Guide the, guide the energy up from the sit bones all the way to the crown of the head. Hold it at the top. And a nice audible exhale, creating an HAA sound in the back of the throat, side out, let it all go. One more time, deep inhale into the nose, sending that beautiful energy, the prana, the life force, all the way to the bottom of the lungs. Sip a little more in, hold it at the top. Then keep your lips sealed and exhale out through the nose, try to create the same HAA sound in the back of the throat, that same oceanic sound in the back of the throat. Then gently blink your eyes open. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up to the ceiling. Keep the focus onto your breath. And as you exhale, reach the right arm down, push the left sit bone down to the mat, and reach the left arm up and over. Gently maybe start to bend your right elbow, start to release it closer down to the mat. It's still feeling how your left sit bone is still connected to the mat. Then come back to center, left palm comes down, reach your right arm up and over, lengthen through the right side body, push the right sit bone down, and reach your right arm up and overhead. Slowly start to bend your left elbow, go a little bit deeper, still feeling the right sit bone connecting down to the earth. Come back to center, walk your fingers forward, maintain a flat spine. Now feel the opening in your hips as you let the knees to fall out to the side, pull the belly into the spine, lengthen out from the lower back, lengthen out from your spine. Now maybe go a little bit more forward, then slowly start to release the forehead down to the earth. Come back to center, change the legs, bring the opposite 
shin bone forward. Let's feel. Make sure that your shin bones are meeting right at the center. Flexing your feet. Start to walk your fingers forward. Soften the knees down to the earth. Maintain a flat spine. Deep inhale through the nose. Pull the lower belly in. Feel how you lengthen it out from your lower back. Really feel your hip flexors are opening up here. And as you exhale, release the forehead down towards the mat. Good job. Come back to center. Create a gentle twist. Turn to the right. Place the left palm onto your right knee. Keep your right fingers behind you to lengthen out through the spine. Keeping the crown of the head right over the sit bones. Come back to center. Twist to the other side. Right hand comes to the outside of the left knee. Turn and twist. And come back to center. Come on all the way down to hands and knees, all fours. Palms underneath the shoulders, spreading the fingers. Your knees come underneath your hips. Stay your hip distance apart. Point the toes back behind you. Start to slowly go through a couple cats and cows. Lifting the gaze, dropping the belly. Exhale, gaze back towards your navel. Cup, navel coming to your cat pose. Again, inhale. Lift up your gaze. And exhale, round it all the way. Good. Then tuck your toes under. Lift your knees just an inch away from the mat. Hover the thigh bones, the shin bones over the mat. Then start to engage your thigh bones, so thigh muscles instead. Reach the chest forward, wrap the tricep muscles back. Lengthen to all four quarters of your neck. Hold it here, maybe pick up your right foot and hover. Pull the right knee slightly towards the chest. Round through the spine, gaze back to your right knee. Then send your right knee back, right foot back. Release the right foot. Your knees are still away from the mat. Lift the left foot up and away from the mat. Then slowly start to pull the left knee towards the chest. Gaze back towards the left knee. Round through the spine. Push the earth away. Send your left knee back. Release the left foot. Then stretch back into a downward facing dog. Make sure your feet are hip distance apart. Your heels are hiding behind your toes. You're pressing down to the toe mounts. Your heels are maybe may down onto the mat, they may not be, and that's totally fine. But I want you to focus on lengthen through the spine. So feel the energy as you're pushing all 10 knuckles down to the mat. R wrap the tricep muscles down towards the mat and spin your biceps up towards the ceiling. Pull the belly into the spine. And lengthen out through the lower back. Soften the knees as much as you need to to create that nice long spine. And then slowly, as you maintain that nice long spine, maybe soften the backs of the knees towards the back of the mat, and maybe soften the heels down towards the earth. Walk your hands back all the way to your feet. Come on into a ragdoll uttanasana. Grab it onto opposite elbow. Swing the body from one side to the other. Let the crown of the head to melt down to the earth. Soften the knees. Maybe shift the body weight just slightly more into your toe mounts. Bring the hands behind your lower back. Inward the head, squeeze the shoulder blades, lift the fist to the ceiling. Now see if you can lift the shoulders away from the ears, lengthen through the back of the neck. Just bend the elbows, release the thumbs down to your lower back. Change the interlock, place the awkward index finger on top. Squeeze the shoulder blades, squeeze the elbows together, then lift the fist back to the ceiling. Lengthen through the back of the neck. Oh, that feels so good and so awkward. Release the fist down towards the lower back. Release the hands down to the mat. And walk all the way out into a high plank position, top of a push-up. Your feet are still hip distance apart. You're spreading the fingers away from each other, wrapping the triceps back and spinning the biceps forward. Lengthen to the neck. Tuck the tailbone under. Then slowly start to lift the right foot up and away from the mat. Bend your right knee up, guided all the way to the right tricep. Push into the left toe mount. Keep your left leg, that's your back leg, nicely engaged. And then see if you can touch the right tricep with the right knee. Then send the right leg back, come back into a high plank, uh, yes, that's a high plank position. Then lift the left foot up and away from the mat. And bring the left knee all the way to the left tricep. Push into the right toe mount, reach the crown of the head forward. Feel the core, but still focus on your steady breath even after the nose. Send your left foot back to meet the right. And come on down onto your forearms, onto your elbows. Forearm plank. Tucking the tailbone under. Pulling the lower belly in. Bring your feet together. Roll over to the outer arch of the right foot. Lift up the left arm. Side plank on the right forearm. Make sure that the left hip is not falling backwards. It's coming right on top of the right hip. Then you push into the right forearm and lift the hips away from the mat. Come back into your forearm. 
Feet are together, roll over to the outer arch of the left foot and reach the right arm to the sky. Same thing here. Your right hip wants to fall back. Stack it on top of the left hip, flex your feet and lift the hips a little higher. Lift it up from the left shoulder, pressing down into the left forearm. Come on back down onto your mat. Both forearms down. Palms are down. Wrists are aligned with the elbows. Walk your toes in towards the elbows. Come on into your dolphin pose. Pull the belly in. Same thing here as in your downward facing dog. Push down into your forearms, into the elbows, like they were your palms. Then lift the energy up all the way to your sit bones, to your tailbone. Soften the knees and make your spine as long as you can. And then maybe slowly throughout the next couple of breaths, you can straighten out through the legs by just softening the backs of the knees towards the back of the mat. But maintain a flat spine, maintain that nice long spine, especially the lower back. Good, and slowly walk your feet back into your forearm plank position. Drop the hips down, drop the belly down. Sphinx pose. Press into the tops of your feet. Roll the chest more forward. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Now press into more onto your pinky toe mount on your feet. And then see if you can spin your inner thighs up towards the ceiling. And press it into your feet so much that you're lifting the kneecaps away from the mat. And come on down, all the way onto the mat. Bring the arms by your side, turn the palms down. Thumbs are out. Lift the chest away from the mat. Keep the palms down, but elbows straight. Then slowly start to lift the right leg up and away from the mat. Lift it more like from the inner thigh. Then lift the left leg up and away from the mat. Now the question is how long you can make your legs. It's not about the height, it's all about the length. Lengthen it out from the lower spine. Bring, uh, sending the big toes back towards the back of the room. Then lift the arms away from the mat. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Turn on the tricep muscles. Lengthen through all four corners of your neck, gazing down at the top of your mat. Interlock the hands behind your back. Squeeze the shoulder blades, lift up your chest. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, come on down onto your mat, forehead down. Place your hands next to your floating ribs. Press into the tops of your feet, energize through the legs. Squeeze the shoulder blades, and then slowly start to press into your palms and lift up your chest. Come into your upper facing dog. If up dog is too harsh, you can always modify it with a cobra or maybe keeping the thighs down and just come up halfway with the elbows bent. And glide back to your downward facing dog. Head side to the sky. Slow inhale to the nose. Exhale, let it down. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top of the mat. Inhale, come into a half day lift, place the palms onto the shin bone, reach the ground of the head forward, squeeze the shoulder blades together onto your back, lengthen through your neck. Exhale, fold forward, bring the forehead down to your shins, wrap the forearms behind the calves, pull yourself closer to the legs. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky, rise up, bring the palms to touch, and bring the hands back to your heart. Samasthi. Inhale, lift up the arms. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up your heart, Ardha. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, high plank pose. Slowly lower down, Chaturanga. Maybe you bring the knees down, squeeze the elbows in. Inhale, upward facing dog, lift up your chest. And exhale, downward facing dog, keep side to the sky. Deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it out. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step or hop to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift up your chest. Exhale, fall deep. Inhale, rise up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands back to your heart. You're going to add on. Inhale, lift up the arms. Exhale, find the back bend. Go push the arms, push the hips forward. Energize through the legs. Push the hips more forward. Lift up your heart. Inhale, back to center. Side twist. Left arm forward, right arm back. Guide your right hip forward. Reach your right fingertips back. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, side twist to the left, right arm forward, left arm back, guide your left hip forward. Inhale, come back to center, exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha, lift up your heart. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, lower down, Chaturanga, modify if you need it. Inhale, Cobra or Up Dog. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. Deep inhale through your nose. And let it out, exhale. Inhale, gaze forward, exhale, step, hop, float to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift up your heart. Exhale, fold deep. 
Inhale, reach the arms to the sky, rise up, lift up. Bring your hands back to your heart, Samasthiti. Inhale, lift up your arms. Find that back bend, go post the arms. Inhale, back to center, side twist. Right arm back, left arm forward. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, side twist to the left. Inhale, back to center. You're going to do a side stretch. Grab onto your left wrist. Tuck the tailbone under and pull the left wrist all the way to the right as you push the hips all the way to the left. Come back to center. Grab onto your right wrist and pull the right wrist all the way to the left. Stacking the shoulders on top of each other, hips on top of each other. Push the hips to the right. Come back to center. Hands to touch, gaze up. Exhale, fold forward. Come down. Inhale, lift up your heart. Exhale, step hop back. Go through your vinyasa. Skip the vinyasa if it's too much. And just simply step back to your downward facing dog. And inhale, lift the right leg halfway up. Point the right toes down to the mat. As you exhale, bring it over to the left tricep. Cross it underneath the body. Pull the belly in. See if you can guide your right knee closer to the left tricep. Extend the right leg out to the side. Falling star, lift the left arm high into the sky. Push the earth away with the right palm. Lift up from the right shoulder. Release the left palm down. Pull the right leg back to the ceiling. And as you exhale, step it all the way through to your low lunge. Dropping the left knee down, point the left toes back. And inhale, lift up the arms. Draw the tip, tailbone down towards the earth. But as you pull the belly into the spine, you lengthen up from the lower back and lift the energy all the way up to the ceiling. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale down. Release the hands down to the mat. Shift the body weight back, come into a half split pose. Bring your fingers back to frame your right shin bone, or maybe grab a block or two if you have them and you like them. I love them. Lift up from your lower back. So instead of rounding over your leg and trying to go deep, see if you can lengthen out from your lower back. Maintain that nice long flat spine here. Pulling the belly in and then keeping the flat spine just by bending the elbows. See if you can bring your chest closer to your right thigh. Shift the body weight forward. Come up onto your fingertips, tuck the back toes under and lift the left knee away from the mat. In a low lunge, all ten toes facing forward. Pull the belly in, guide your right hip back to the center line and float the arms back behind you. Turn the palms down, squeeze the shoulder blades and lengthen through the back of the neck. Pull the right hip back, guide the left hip forward. Deep inhale through the nose. Maybe bend your front knee a little bit more, reach with the chest more forward. And twist, left palm down, right arm to the sky. Again, you can use a block underneath the left palm if you need it. Try not to twist in your hips, twist in your torso, reach the right arm high. And release the right palm down to the mat. Step back into a high plank position. Feet are together, roll over to the outer arch of the right foot and lift the left arm high to the sky. Three more breaths. You can add any variations, dropping the bottom knee or lifting the top leg. Or simply hold. Energize through the legs. Lift up from the right shoulder, right wrist joint. Come on back to center. High plank, feet are together. Go to the left side. Left arm down, right arm high to the sky. Stack the hips on top of each other. Lift up from the left shoulder, left wrist. Reach the energy up to the right finger. Stack the right hip on top of the left. Come back to center, go through your vinyasa, we'll come back to your downward facing up. Inhale your left leg halfway up, point the left toes down, level out to the hips. Exhale, bring the left knee all the way to the right tricep, hug it in as much as you can, pull it even closer, energize to the back leg, and slowly extend the left leg out to the side, falling star, right arm up to the ceiling, open through the chest, twist your chest. Twist your hip up to the ceiling, but still lift up from your left shoulder. Come on back down, right palm down. Inhale your left leg high to the sky. Exhale, pull it all the way through, low lunge. Drop the right knee down, point the right toes back. Inhale, lift up the arms. Crescent move. Dropping the hips down, lifting the energy up to the ceiling with the fingers. Lifting up from your lower back. Guide your left hip back, turn the right hip more forward. Deep inhale. Stay here, maybe sing the hips a little deeper as you exhale. And bring the hands down to the mat. 
half split or the Hanumanasana. Straight and out through the left leg as you shift the body weight back. Flex the feet, the left foot. And then frame your left shin either with the fingers down onto the mat or a block framing or two block frames. The left shin bone. <clears throat> Pull the left knee back to its socket. Lengthen through the back of the neck. Flex your left foot and maybe slowly maintain a flat spine. Bend the elbows, come a little deeper. Rebend your left leg, shift the body weight forward. Fingertips come down to the mat. Tuck your right toes under, lift the right knee away from the mat. Pull the left hip back, guide your right hip forward. Engage your belly, float the arms back behind you. As you lift the arms, your left hip wants to swing out all the way to the left side. So instead, turn on the left outer hip muscles to guide the left hip back into that center line. And lift the right kneecap away from the mat, so your back leg, the right leg is strong and straight, and that's the extension of your spine, as well as your neck, right? You're not gazing up, you're not gazing down, you're keeping the neck as the extension of the spine. Deep inhale, exhale, right palm down, left arm to the sky. Watch your right heel. If your right heel starts to fall out to the side, you may feel like you're going into a deeper twist, but you're going into a rear twist. So point the right foot, the right heel straight back behind you. Try not to twist in your hips and just twist in your torso from your belly button up and reach the left arm to the sky. Lift up from the right shoulder, take a deep inhale. Exhale, release the finger down to the mat. Good, and then step back all the way into high plank position. Feet are together, hold it here. I'm coming down onto your elbows again. Forearm plank. <clears throat> Walk your toes in towards the elbows, back into that dolphin pose. Feet are hip distance apart. Your knees can be soft, your tailbone's lifting high to the scap. Hold it here, or maybe bring your feet a little closer together. Shift the body weight over to the left foot and slowly lift the right leg up and away from the mat. So your left knee, the bottom leg, can be bent. But your top leg should be nicely energized. So turn on the right glute muscle. Point or flex the back foot, it doesn't matter, but make sure you're not opening to the hip, you're pointing the right toes down to the mat, especially if you're flexing that foot. Push into the forearms, pull the belly in, release the right foot down, and again, lift the left leg up and away from the mat, lifting it from the left inner thigh, pushing into the forearms, lifting the chest away from the mat, maybe soften your right knee, but try to straighten out to the lifted left leg. Your job slowly release. Now stay in that dolphin pose, gaze forward, and see if you can lift both forearms away from the mat in the same time to come out into a downward facing dog. Hips up to the sky. Deep, slow inhale through the nose. Deep, slow exhale out through the nose. Inhale, gaze forward, exhale, step, hop, jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift up your heart. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees, come on chair pose, Utkatasana. Lifting up the arms, turning the palms towards each other. Shifting the body weight back to your heels. Pull the belly button into the spine. Tuck the tailbone under. Feel how you energize throughout the entire glute muscle. You're not just creating a big arch into your lower back. You're pulling that belly in. Engaging every single muscle around your hips, around your glutes. And slowly dropping the thigh bones deeper down to the mat. Now bring your fingers align with the shoulders. Keep the hips stable, reach the right arm back, left arm forward. Deep inhale as you lengthen, exhale as you twist. Come back to center, lift both arms up. Exhale, hands, finger, fingers align with the shoulders, and exhale, twist over to the left. Slow, steady breath, in and out through the nose. Bring the hands back, lift up the arms, maybe bring the palms to touch, cross your thumbs, sit down deeper, thunderbolt. Exhale, fly the arms back behind you. Go a little deeper in your seat. Interlock the hands behind your back. Squeeze the shoulder bit. Exhale, keep the bind. Bring the forehead down to your shins. Good. Then bring the fingers down to the mat. Don't get your feet all the way mat distance apart. And then make sure your feet stay parallel. So your heels are hiding behind your toes. Your feet are mat distance apart. And slowly draw the hips down. So you bring in the hips and the knees in one line. Then you stay on your fingertips or maybe reach the arms forward, dropping the belly in between the inner thighs. Feel all ten knuckles on your feet pressing down to the mat, but your toes are light. 
You're creating one nice long energy line from the fingertips all the way back to the sit bones. Then right your hands to your heart, draw the sit bones down and turn your toes out to the side, Malasana. Push the elbows into the inner knees. So this is a posture where it's really nice to use a block if you're a little tighter in the, in the hip joint. Or if you want to go deeper in this pose, instead of turning the toes out, you can try to turn the toes a little more inward. So they almost parallel, or maybe they go all the way to parallel. So you're going to feel a little bit different stretch in your outer hips. But deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, let it out. Release the hands down to the mat. Toe heel your feet together. Inhale, lift up your heart. Exhale, put the hands down to the mat. Step back into a high plank pose. Lower down to your chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. This is all optional. You can skip this vinyasa as often as you like. And back into down dog. Inhale, your right leg high to the sky. Pulling the toe, lift it nice and high. Exhale, bring it over to the right tricep. Hold it here for three breaths. Or maybe bend the elbows. Now, I'm going to switch back so I have more room. Now, if you want, you can try to practice your hurdler pose. Come all the way down. Catch the left side body with the left elbow. Then lift the legs and balance onto your chaturanga arms. Inhale your right leg back up, up to the sky. Exhale, step it all the way through low lunge. Set up the back foot for your warrior one. Turn the back foot down, back heel down. And inhale, lift up, warrior one. I like to keep hip distance apart in between my heels and warrior one, so I have more room for my left hip to slowly start to move forward. What you want to do, you want to keep that back leg as strong as you can, pressing the outer arch of the back foot down to the mat, and use all that energy to turn the left hip more forward and guide your right hip more back. Lift up from the waistline, reach all the energy off to the ceiling, keeping the lifting sensation from your lower back, Slowly start to bend your right knee a little bit more, but reconnect with the back foot. Keep the left knee as straight as you can, lifting the left inner knee away from the mat. Deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, open to the side. Warrior two. Adjust your feet. Now I like to keep a heel to heel alignment in warrior two. I turn the back toes in, but maybe not as much as in warrior one. But it all depends on your hip flexibility, how fast, how much you can turn that hip joint right here. So you feel that that left outer hip muscle is spinning down towards the mat just like your back toes are turned inward. But your right knee is pointing straight forward towards that second toenail. And you're softening the right thigh bone down to the mat. But keep lifting up from the lower back. Pull that belly in. Reach your right arm forward, turn the right palm up and reverse your warrior. But keep the bend into the front leg. Your left fingertips can come down into the back of the left leg. You can find the half bind here if you like. Deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, come on back into your warrior two. Extended side angle, right elbow down, left arm high to the sky. Point the right foot, the right knee all the way forward. And find that nice long line from the back here to the crown of the head. So through the next couple of breaths, you may be able to bend your front knee a little bit more and go a little bit deeper into this pose. But constantly recheck with your back foot, with your back leg. Keep it as energized as you can. Then bring the, right, the left arm up and overhead, bicep to the ear, palm facing down, and your left pinky is pointing slightly down towards the mat. Then maybe you can start to release the right fingertips down to the mat, to the outside of the right foot, or maybe grab a block and place the right palm onto the block. Make sure your right knee is still pointing forward. You're turning on that strong right outer hip muscle. Taking a deep inhale. Maybe go a little bit deeper as you exhale. Now lift the left arm back to the ceiling. Stay deep into your warrior two. Come on back. Straighten out through the front leg. Reverse your triangle. Reach back. Exhale. Bring the other hands down to the mat. Go through a vinyasa or skip it and come back into down dog. Inhale, your left leg high to the sky, point your toe, lift it nice and high. Exhale, bring the left knee to the left tricep. Hold it here for three breaths. Maybe start to bend the elbows, or maybe come into a full hurdler pose. I'm gonna slide back a little. Catch your right side body with your right elbow, and maybe float the legs away from the mat. Chaturanga the arms. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Exhale, step it all the way through the lunge. 
Seal your back, heel down, warrior one. Back leg is strong, pull the belly in. Inhale, lift the chest up, warrior one. Root down to the outer arch of the right foot. Lift the right knee cap away from the mat. And then keep maybe a little bit of a distance in between the heels. It's not fully heel to heel alignment. So you have more room for that right hip to turn forward and more room for that left hip to guide back. Lift up from the waistline, reach the energy up to the ceiling. And maybe slowly start to bend your left knee a little bit more. Slow, deep inhale through your nose. Sit down a little bit deeper as you exhale. Deep inhale. Exhale, open to the side, warrior two. Adjust your feet. Turn the back toes in. Root down to the outer arch of the back foot. Drop the left side one deeper, lift up from the waistline. Gently gaze over the left fingers as you soften the shoulders away from the ears. Draw the left side one deeper, reconnect with the back leg. Flip your left palm and reverse your warrior. Keep the, but keep the bend in the front knee, front leg. Lift up from the left side waist. Maybe find a half bind behind your back with the right hand. And come on back into your warrior two. Extended side angle, left elbow down, right arm comes high to the scalp. Try not to go into your deepest variation. Just go down slowly with the breath. And keep focusing on every single part of your body, especially your back foot, your back leg. And make sure your left knee points straight forward and you're turning on the left outer hip muscles. Then reach the top arm forward, bicep to the ear, palm facing down. Find a nice long line from the back foot all the way to the right pinky. And maybe go down a little bit deeper if you need to even grab a block. Place it to the outside of the left foot. Keep the left knee point straight forward, all four quarters of the left knee. Three more breaths. Back leg is strong. Breath is slow and fluid. Lift the right arm back to the sky. Keep the bend into the front knee. Turn on the core, come back warrior two. And straighten out to the front leg. Reverse your triangle. Lift the left arm up and over. Exhale, bring the hands down to the mat. Go through your vinyasa. And step back to your down dog. Take a deep inhale through the nose. And a slow exhale through the nose. Again, deep inhale through the nose. Slow exhale through the nose. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step up to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift up your chest. Exhale, folding nice and deep. Come on back to chair pose, Utkatasana. Lift up the arms. Drop the thighs deep. Pull the belly in. Bring your hands to your heart center. Dropping the thigh bones a little bit deeper, lengthen out from the spine. And as you exhale, twist. Hook the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Press the palms together. Press the knuckles together. Maybe place the right palm for a second onto your lower back sacrum, making sure that it's now rounding, it's nice and flat, and it's not twisting either. You're not lifting the right hip higher than the left. Nothing is weird in your lower back. Then join the palms together again and twist. And come back to center, lift the arms up. Hands back to your heart center, sit two inches deeper. <clears throat> and then hold the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. You can check onto that lower back situation, everything is good, nothing is weird. And bring the palms together again. Maybe bring the gaze to the ceiling. With each inhale, remind your spine to get longer. With each exhale, soften the belly and twist. And come back to center, inhale, lift up the arms. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Go through Vinyasa, back into Down Dog. Anukashvanasana. Inhale your right leg off to the sky. Bend the knee inside the hips. Circle the knee around a couple of times or maybe flip your dog if you like. Wild things, be gentle and mindful. Make your way back, right palm down. Right leg comes high to the sky. And as you exhale, step the right leg all the way forward into low lunge. Set up the back foot for warrior one. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. Open to the side, warrior two. Straight up through the front leg, 
Come into triangle, reach the right arm forward, release the right palm down, onto your right shin on the left arm high to the sky. Stack the left shoulder on top of the right shoulder and try not to sink all the body weight into that right palm. Instead, lift up. You can just always like tap the right fingers onto the right shin. Energize to the right leg. Feel your right thigh muscle being turned on. You're pressing down through all four corners of the right foot and you feel the connection with the back heel. Then internally rotate the top arm. Turn the left thumb back towards the back of the mat. Bend your left elbow, reach back behind your back and roll the left shoulder to the ceiling. Maybe gaze up. You can stay here or get super light onto your right fingers and reach the right arm forward. Turn the right palm to the sky. Release the right finger tips down to the mat. Lift up the left arm to the sky. Then reach the left arm all the way forward, bicep to the ear. You can hold it here or maybe again, get a light onto the right fingers and reach the right arm up and away from the shin. Release, right fingers down, left arm high. Come back up to center. Then turn the right toes inward. Make your feet parallel. If you have any sciatica issues, you can turn the toes a little bit towards each other. Gently pigeon toe your feet, otherwise keep your feet parallel. And then feel how you're pressing down to the outer arches of the feet. Bring your hands onto your lower back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Bring the elbows as close as you can onto your back. Then with a nice flat spine, start to lean forward with the chest. As you do that, I'm going to turn to the side to show it. We tend to start to push the booty back behind us. So try to keep the booty aligned with the heels, the hips aligned with the heels, and lean more forward with the chest. I know it's a little more difficult because you really need to engage your core and use your core muscles. So we are halfway down. Your crown of the head is reaching forward from the tailbone all the way to the crown of the head in one nice long energy line. Squeeze those elbows together onto your back and slowly release the forehead down towards the mat as you're squeeze, still squeezing the shoulder blades together onto your back. Come up back just halfway, lift up the chest, then reach the arms out to the side like airplane arms and try not to push the hip, hips back behind the heel line. Instead, reach with the chest more forward. Release the left palm down and reach the right arm to the sky. Place your right palm onto your lower back sac sacrum one more time again to make sure that the hips, is still, the hips are still level and your lower back is still nice and long. Then twist your torso and add the arm. Your right fingers are the extension of the right shoulder. You're not just tossing the right arm back behind you, right? Lengthen through the spine. Then come back to center. Fly the arms out to the side. Engage your core. Bring your right palm down, right fingertips down. Place your left palm onto your lower back sacrum. Twist in your torso without twisting in your hips. Then add the left arm. And the left fingers are the extension of the shoulder. So your twist is, may not look as intense as if you would just like do this, but that doesn't really help. All right, so left finger keeps aligning the left shoulder and you soften the belly to twist. Okay, come on back to center, reach the arms out to the side, hands onto your hips, rise all the way back up. Turn the right foot forward, reverse your triangle, reach the right arm back, both legs are straight, and exhale the other hands down to the mat, go through your vinyasa, make your way back to your downward facing dog. Then lift the left leg up to the sky, Bend the knees, stand the hips. Flip your dog if you like. If it doesn't feel good in your shoulder, don't ever do it. Left palm down to the mat, left leg high to the sky. Exhale, step it all the way through the low lunge. Seal your back here down to the mat for a breath. Rise up, warrior one. Then open to the side, warrior two. Straighten out to the front leg. Triangle trigonasana. Pull the left thigh bone back. Engage the left thigh muscle. Reach the left arm as forward as you can, then release the left finger dips down right onto the sky. Again, feel how your back is against the wall. Your right shoulder is stacked on top of the left. And you're not sinking into the left palm, you're lifting the energy up to the right fingertips. Deep, strong inhale, hold it here, exhale. Then internally rotate the right palm, turn the right thumb to the back. Bend your elbow, reach back behind your back for that half bind. Roll the right shoulder to the ceiling. Left hand to the neck. Then get light into the left fingers as an option. Lift the left arm up and away from the mat. 
If you have any lower back situation, maybe don't do that. Just get light up to the left fingers. Deep inhale. Hold it here, exhale. Release the left finger, dips down to the mat. Lift the right arm high to the sky. Reach the top arm forward. Bicep to the ears, soften the inner shoulder away from the ears. Get light onto the left fingers, hold it there. Or maybe lift the left arm up and away from the mat and hold. For three, for two, and one. Release, left finger takes that. Right arm high to the sky, press into your feet, come on back up. Turn the left toes in, parallel your feet. Gonna flip around. So we are here, all right? Bring your hands behind your lower back. Your feet are either pedal or slightly pigeon toe. Lift up your chest, and as you exhale, with a bind, go forward. See if you can lift the fist higher, and lift the shoulders away from the ears. Shift the body weight more back into the toe mounds, so your heels and your hips are still in one line. Good, release the hands down to the mat and come into a forward fold. Now, if you can walk your hands align with the heels, so the heels of the hands will be aligned with the heels of your feet, and your palms can go shoulder distance apart, and the crown of the head can melt down to the mat, then you're getting ready for your tripod headstand. Now make sure that the top of the head is down onto the mat. I have a little bump, so I'm in a little bit of a difficult situation, but that's not really good for yoga, I just realized that. So bun, no bun. Hands down to the mat, and maybe just place the knees onto your triceps today. If you have tripod headstand in your practice, you can float the feet away from the mat, bring them all the way up to the sky, pulling the belly in, energize to the legs, keep the elbows shoulder distance apart, your palms shoulder distance apart. Then slowly split the legs. I have a wall to my right, so it's gonna look a little awkward. Then bring your feet back down to the mat. Come back up halfway, place your hands onto your hips, and lift up your chest. Okay. Now, turn the toes out, the heels in, bring the hands to your heart center, and bend your knees, come on down into this goddess squat. And place your hands onto your inner knees, lean slightly forward with the chest, but keep the spine long, then push into the right inner knee, dip the right shoulder in, and gaze to the left. And switch to the other side, dip the left shoulder in, straight into the left elbow, push the left knee slightly back. And then come back to center, bring your hands to your heart, draw the tailbone deep down to the mat, then inhale, reach up the arms. Now see if you can draw the tailbone deeper down, but reach the arms all the way to the ceiling, pull the belly in, turn the knees out so they're pointing towards the second toenail. Lengthen out from your lower back, take a deep inhale, Sink down, sink down a little bit deeper as you exhale. Three more breaths. Stay with it. Calm the mind with the breath. Press into the heels, rise back up. Good. Place your hands onto your hips. Now we're going to turn back forward. Now step the left foot next to the right. Come onto the top of the mat. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Lift the left knee up and away from the mat. Yes, the left knee. So lift the left knee up and away from the mat in your Tadasana. We're going to come into a tree pose. So bring the sole of the left foot into the right inner thigh. I'm turning around so you guys can see me. So the places you can place your left, left foot is either underneath the knee, oops, or you maybe can run in kickstand position if you don't have balance like I do, don't have right now. Or you can bring the right, left foot all the way up to the right inner thigh. Bring hands to your heart. Or you can always hold on to that foot if you need to. Now root down to the center of the right heel. Make your standing right leg as strong as you can. And then start to soften the left inner thigh, the left inner groin away from the hip. So reach the energy down to the left inner knee. You can keep the hands at your heart, or you can lift the arms up to the ceiling. You can bring your gaze up to the ceiling. You can maybe bring the palms to touch, or you want to move the upper body, moving the branches of the tree, any variation. And bring the hands back to your heart center. Come back into that one-legged Tadasana, left leg lift. Cross the left ankle on top of the right knee for your figure four, then slowly sit back down into that figure four. Soften that hip. 
Sit down nice and deep. Keep the chest long. Lift up from the lower back and maybe slowly bring the forearms down to your left shin. Focus on the breath. If you want, you can bring the fingertips down to the mat. Maybe the palms come down to the mat. Maybe you're coming all the way into the flying pigeon pose. Hooking the left toes to the outside of the right tricep. Maybe just picking up the right foot slightly. Or maybe stretch the right leg all the way back behind you. Good. Slowly come on back up. Come back into that one leg into the asana. Try not to touch the ground. Left knee lifts. Now lift the arms to the sky, wrap the left elbow underneath the right, and then wrap, wrap the le left knee over the right. Kickstand, bind, full bind. Shoulder, bind. Lift the elbows up, so your elbows are aligned with the shoulders. Reach your forearms forward. Now bring the elbows and the knees in one line. Squeeze the inner thighs together, squeeze the elbows together. See if you can lean back a little bit more. Deep inhale. Go a little deeper as you exhale. And slowly start to lean forward, round right through the spine, and bring the elbow to your knee. Nice job. Lift up your chest. Keep the eagle arm or grab it onto the shoulders. Unwrap your left leg. I'm not going to have enough room, so I'm going to turn around. Without touching the mat, reach your left leg back for an eagle arm airplane. Your standing right leg can be bent, but try to straighten out to the lifted left leg. Deep, slow inhale. Bend your front knee. Step back into warrior three. I'm sorry, warrior one. Your right leg is forward. Your left leg is back. You're still holding on on that eagle position with the arms. Maybe find a baby back bend here. Release the arms. Inhale. Lift them up to the sky. Bring the hands behind your back. Interlock the hands. Lift up your chest. Exhale. Fold forward. And maybe shimmy the right shoulder to the inside of the right knee as you draw the crown of the head down to the mat. Connect to your breath. Connect to your body. Feel your back heel. Pull the right knee back to the center line. Then push into your feet. Inhale, rise back up. Warrior one. Lift up the arms. Bring your hands onto your hips. Step the back foot in slightly straight out through both legs. Bring your hands behind your back, grab on opposite elbows, or maybe come into reverse namaskar by bringing the palms all the way to touch. Squeeze the shoulder blades, inhale, lift up the chest, exhale, slowly go down halfway, reaching the chest forward, reaching the crown of the head forward, lengthening through the neck, and as you exhale, bring the forehead all the way down to your right shin. Slow deep inhale through the nose, and exhale, let it out. Bring your hands behind your back, you know, allow the hands, squeeze the shoulder blades, and let the fist to the ceiling. Release the hands down to the mat, forward fold. See if you can bring the forehead all the way down to the right shin, pulling the right hip back behind you, like I place a strap around your hips and I'm pulling it up and back. Shift the body weight into the right foot, and lift the left leg up and away from the mat for your standing split. Maybe wrap the right forearm behind the right calf. Or maybe go for a little handstand practice. Single left leg up. And find a little air time. Maybe by the wall. Then gently release. Forward fold at the top of the mat. Don't heel your feet hip distance apart. Grab onto your big toes with the index finger and middle finger. Lift up your chest. Exhale, fold forward. Push the elbows out to the side length and to the back of the neck. Soften the crown of the head down to the mat. And slowly with the breath, straight around to the backs of the legs as you lengthen out from your lower spine. Good job, release. Don't heel your feet together. Place your hands onto your hips. Rise up all the way to stand. Then lift the right knee up. For your one-legged Tadasana. We're going to start with that tree pose. So you can bring the sole of the right foot all the way down for the kickstand, up onto the shin, avoid the kneecap, and all, all the way up on and to your inner thigh. Hands at your heart center. Now as you push your right, the sole of the right foot 
into your left inner thigh. See how you're softening the right knee away from the body and turning it slowly out to the side by engaging your right outer hip glute muscle. Hold it here or maybe lift the arms all the way up to the ceiling. Any variation, you can bring the hands behind your back for your reverse namaskar. namaskar. Three more breaths. Bring the hands back to your heart center. Release from your tree pose. Bring your right knee up into that one leg of Tadasana. Then cross the right ankle on top of the left knee. Hands at your heart and slowly start to sit down to your figure four. Spine is long. You're sending the hips, the sit bones straight back behind you. You're feeling the body right into the left heel. And maybe bring the forearms down onto your right shin or the fingers down to the mat. If you have blocks, it's wonderful to have the blocks here to maintain a flat spine. Or you can come down all the way to your palms, hooking the right toes to the left tricep, lean forward, maybe just pick up the left toes behind you and turn it to the side so you guys can see what's happening behind me. Maybe just picking up the left foot, or maybe lifting the left leg all the way up to the ceiling with a nice exhale engaging the core. Come on back slowly. Release your head to touch the ground as you lift the right knee back into that one leg into dasana. And come on into eagle. Grab the right arm under the left. Maybe grab opposite shoulders. Then grab the right leg over the left. Kickstand, bind, full bind. And then adjust so you can bring the knees and elbows together in one line. Lift up the elbows, shoulder height. Tuck the tailbone under, squeeze the outer hips. And then slowly start to round down, bring the elbows all the way down to your knees. Round through the spine. Focus on your breath. And slowly rise up, keep the eagle arm. Left toes pointing forward. Unwrap your right leg, and then come on into an eagle arm airplane. Oops, wall behind me, or window behind me. Point the right toes down, soften the standing leg if you need it. Straighten out and just lift the right leg. Deep inhale, soften to, through the left leg, and step back into your warrior one. Keep the eagle arm, warrior one. Find the back bend here. Release the arms. Inhale, lift up your arms. Exhale, bring the hands behind your back. Interlock the hands, lift up your chest. Inhale, exhale, melt down. Maybe bring your left shoulder to the inside of the left knee. Root down through the back heel. Pull the left heel back. Push the right heel down. Inhale, rise back up. Lift up the arms. Bring your hands onto your hips. Step the, back foot, the right foot back. Halfway, keep the hips facing forward. Run the hands behind your back. Grab on opposite elbows or reverse namaskar. Root down to the feet. Energize to the legs. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly start to go down. Halfway. Squeezing the shoulder blades. Lift the left thigh bone. Feel the energy in the left foot. Feel the energy in the right heel. And bring the forehead all the way down to the mat. All the way down to the left shin. Soften the left knee as much as you need it. Breathe more length into the spine. Breathe more legs to the backs of the legs. Interlock the hands behind your back. Try to place the opposite, the awkward index finger on top. Lift the fist to the ceiling. Lift it up. Hands down to the mat. Forward fold. Feel that stretch. Again, feel like I'm wrapping a strap behind and around your hips and pulling it up and back. Then shift the body weight forward. Come on into a half split pose. Lift the right leg up. Wrap the left. Wrap the left forearm behind the left calf, or maybe go for a little handstand. Swinging with the other leg up. Engage the legs, your core, press down to the fingers, keep the elbows straight. Good job, slowly release. Forward fold at the top of the mat. Bend your knees and slowly sit down onto your mat. Great job, everyone. Just going to check on the clock. Perfect. All right. We're going to come down onto our mats. We're going to start with the Upavishta, right-legged seat. Bring the legs out to the side. Turn the toes to the ceiling, knees to the ceiling. Sit up nice and tall.
Stay here or walk the hands all the way forward. Coming down onto your forearms and reach up with your spine. Can you lengthen out from your lower back? Point the knees and the toes towards the ceiling. And maybe come all the way down. You can even place a block right at the base of your sit bone and then lay over that block. I love that. So I can feel how I'm lengthening out from my lower back. Good, slowly come on back up. Bring the soles of the feet together for your Baddha Konasana. Let the knees to fall out to the side, sit up tall. You can stay right here, you don't need to fall forward. Just maintain a flat spine as you soften the knees away from each other. Or slowly start to lean forward, pushing the elbows into the inner knees. Lengthening out from your lower back. And bring the forehead down towards the toes. Soften the back of the neck. Soften the shoulders. Good job. Come on back up. And then we're gonna come into Dandana Maya Join your shots on a forehead to knee posture. Your right leg goes into a 45 degree angle. You bring the sole of the left foot into the right inner thigh. You soften the left knee away from the body. If you have both sit bones down onto the mat, turn around, turn over your right leg, and then gently walk your fingers forward. Deep inhale, lengthen from the spine. Exhale, bring the forehead down to your right shin. And then come back just halfway. Place the right palm to the inside of the right shin. Then lift the left arm up and lengthen out from your spine. A little bit of a side stretch on the left side. You can even bring the right forearm all the way down to the mat. Good, come on back up. Switch out the legs, left leg forward. So the right foot comes into the left inner thigh. Soften the right knee down to the mat. Turn over your left leg, lift the left arm to the ceiling. Lengthen from the spine. Exhale, fold over your left leg. Flex the left foot. Then bring the forehead all the way down to your knee, even if you have to bend that left knee a lot. Feel like left lengthening out from that right lower back area, sacrum area. Lift back up just halfway. Place the left palm to the inside of the left shin, and then reach the right arm up and over. Now maybe slowly you can bring the left forearm all the way down to the mat. Again, lengthen, creating space all the way onto the right side. Come back to center. Bring your legs all the way in front of you. Grab the flesh from underneath you. Inhale, lift up the arms. Exhale, reach for your feet. Maybe grab your big toes. Lift up your chest. Deep inhale. Exhale, go a little deeper down into this pose. Deep inhale, lift up the chest. Exhale, fold all the way forward. Bring the forehead down to your shin. Rise up, bend your knees, soles of the feet down onto the mat. Slowly reaching the arms forward, rolling back down onto your mat. Come on into a happy baby pose, soles of the feet up towards the ceiling, grabbing onto your feet. Stacking the ankles on top of the knees, tucking the chin to the chest, lengthening through the neck. Maybe stretch the right leg out to the side. And then stretch the left leg out to the side. And bring them back to center, maybe stretch both legs out to the side. We'll come back to center. Right knee pulls into the right shoulder socket. Your left leg goes nice and long. Deep inhale. Exhale, turn and twist. Guide your right knee to the left. Turn the right palm to the ceiling. And we'll come back to center. Hug the knees to your chest to neutralize the spine. Then switch to the other side. Right leg long. Left knee comes to the shoulder socket. Deep, slow inhale. Exhale, bring the left knee to the right. And then bringing the left palm to the ceiling. Come back to center. And one more hug. Squeeze the knees to your chest. And come into a plow pose. Shoulders stand if you like. I like to finish my practice in a lot of plow pose. Nice stretch for the lower back. Maybe keeping the knees soft. Your toes may touch the ground, may not. If your toes are easily touching the ground, you can interlock the hands behind you, straighten out to the legs if you like. I like even to do that against the wall. So you can really press into those feet and I can really feel that nice stretch into my lower back. Bend the knees for your death man pose for ear posture. And then 
supporting the lower back coming down onto your mat. Go all the way down. Legs are out to the side, palms facing to the ceiling. Shimmy the shoulder blades a little closer together onto your back. Find a nice lift 